Today I'm going to talk about how I fly with camera gear with minimal fuss. So flying with camera gear can be anxiety provoking for anyone, especially for those of us that are somewhat reluctant flyers. And I'm one of those reluctant flyers. While I fly, I fly out in this SD because it allows me to make the most of the time I have to get to the places I want to be. But I'm not a huge fan of flying and just one of the things that causes some anxiety is how do I get my camera gear through security and onto the plane without any problem. Obviously there's a lot of valuable gear in here and so I'm very want to be very careful with the transportation of it and flying just adds some anxiety to that process. So today I'm going to look at how I packed my bag for a recent long weekend trip to the Rocky Mountain National Park. We'll take a look at a couple things that I think help make it a little easier to get through TSA, things that will help make sure you get your bag into the overhead bins and not being asked to get checked, and then we'll sort of take a look at how I pack my bag so it's nice, safe, and secure on the flight. So regular watchers of the channel know I carry a Schmoder Designs Explorer V2 35 liter bag super versatile for me. It allows me to carry all of my gear and as a YouTuber I tend to carry more gear out in the field than otherwise because I not only have all my still photography items, I also have my video stuff. Sometimes an extra tripod, an extra video camera, and even some of the audio equipment. And then sometimes even the drone on top of that just to add some B-roll footage and, and things like that. So real happy with this bag. But one of the advantages of this bag is at least for domestic airlines, it typically falls within the carry-on luggage specifications. So this bag won't fit underneath the seat, but it will fit in the overhead storage bin, which makes it nice and handy to travel domestically with on airlines. So what do I carry on? This is often a frequent question, especially when it comes to batteries. A lot of people have questions about the, the camera batteries. Can Where should I have them? Should they be with me? Should they be in checked luggage? And really for batteries, you want them in your carry-on luggage because there's more rules and restrictions from the TSA about what you can check into the luggage versus what you can carry on. So I have my batteries. My drone comes with me. When, it's, when I'm taking the drone on a trip with me, it's in the bag. I carry my camera bodies, I carry my lenses, I carry my chargers, I carry my cables, and I carry my tripod most often. And usually, as long as I have room, I'll have my ball head in here as well. So I really pretty much, if they lost all my other luggage, I would still have everything I need to be able to take photos at my destination. Before a trip though, it never hurts to check the TSA policies. They do change occasionally over time about what you can and can't bring on. But that list that I just stated has worked for me for the past several trips across the country and I've had zero problems with those items in my bag. And in fact, with those items, with this bag packed pretty much as you see it now, I really don't have any problem going through TSA. I put it in, my, in the bin, it goes through the belt. Sometimes they pause on it, but I've never really even been asked many questions about it, even with the camera lenses, batteries, all sorts of different types of batteries in there, you know, chargers, cables, everything like that. Uh, the most recent trip to the Rocky Mountain National Park, they didn't open the bag. In fact, this time they didn't even make me take out. I tend to carry my iPad in here, sort of transition from carrying a full laptop to an iPad, especially on shorter long weekend type trips. This trip I didn't even have to take the iPad out of the bag which is super nice and that's something that can change depending on what the TSA is currently enforcing. It can even change from airport to airport but the airports I flew in and out of I just everything was loaded in here and it got through the checkpoints with no problem. So security was a breeze from that standpoint. No questions and it was super easy. So that's getting through TSA security. Once you're through there, the next stressor to me is I don't want the airline to ask me to check my bag. There's just so much in here that's, you know, fragile equipment, sensitive equipment that I don't want it just tossed underneath the belly of the plane with my other luggage. So there's a couple ways to help make sure that doesn't happen. One, I sort of keep this bag nice and compact so it doesn't draw a lot of attention as to be an oversized carry-on. Um, when we look at how I attach my tripod, you'll sort of see one of the little tricks I do to help make sure I don't draw unnoticed attention or have someone going, well, that's a pretty big bag. Like I said, it falls within the limits, but the less attention I can draw with my camera bag, the easier it is when I get on the plane. So first, I tend to fly southwest and and they're the boarding where you boarding groups A, B, and C, and there's no assigned seats. It's just first come, first serve. So if you're an A group, you get to board the plane earlier. And obviously there's one more seats available and two more overhead storage for your, your camera bag. Now this bag, unlike one of my previous camera bags, does not fit under the seat very well at all. If push came to shove, it'd be really hard to put this underneath the seat and not draw attention with it not quite fitting there quite perfectly. So this one sort of really needs to go into the overhead compartments on the plane. So at Southwest, like I said, they do the A, B, C. What I do is I do get the early bird check-in, which means at 24 hours ahead of your boarding time, it self-checks you in. That pretty much guarantees I'm gonna be in the A group and there will always be plenty of room. But the second part of that is boarding time for Southwest starts about a half hour before takeoff. 
So even though you are registered A, if you're not there to board with the A group, they don't wait for you. So if you show up 15 minutes before, the B and C group may already have loaded and it's gonna be much harder to find a spot to put your bag in the overhead storage. So make sure to get there plenty early. I always get there early, board with my A group, and there's always plenty of room in the plane to put this bag. So, so that's how I make sure I always have room for this bag in the overhead bins with Southwest. Now when you fly with another airline like American or Delta or something like that, though they do have reserved seating, it is still one of those things. If you show up too late, too close to departure, the other people have already boarded and while yes, you have a seat, the overhead bins could be jam packed. So again, even when I've got a reserved seat through one of the other airlines, I still like to get there very early. So I'm there right as boarding begins. So I can be one of the first few people on the plane so that I have certainty that there will be room in the overhead bins for the bag. And that's always worked for. But there's always the chance someone's gonna ask you to do something. Maybe someone's having a bad day, they think your bag looks big, it looks bulky or something like that, or just bad luck and you're running late and for some reason maybe it took longer to get through TSA because the lines were long and you get there and through no control that you had, you show up 10 minutes before the plane's gonna take off. So everything's full. So there's two plans I have in the event that ever happens. One, just be nice. Just explain to the stewardess, the, the gate operator, that what you have in the bag, that it's sensitive, that it's equipment, and can they do anything to help you find a spot for it on board and not to have to check it. If that doesn't fail, I would start mentioning, well, I have a lot of batteries in here and they're in different spaces. It'd take me a long time to get all the batteries out of this bag so that it could be checked. Like so I've never had to do that. And I would lean towards the trying to be nice, just explain to them what's going on. And I think if you're nice to the person, there's a good chance they'll help you out and help you figure out a way to get this on board. But Maybe it's holiday season and it's not working. The gate operator's having a terrible day and nothing you say is gonna change their mind and they're gonna make you check your bag. So the cool thing with this Shimoda bag is inside we have this ICU compartment right there. So this is the ICU. This is where the, the cameras go. Well, I always keep in the bottom rain cover. Also keep this cover. So what this does, this is a thing that wraps around the ICU, zippers closed, and has a handle. With this particular bag, if I was ever told I have to check this bag no matter what, I can't talk them out of it, the battery thing doesn't work, they have me pull the batteries out, whatever, I would pull this bag out from the bottom, put my ICU in it. The ICU, as we'll see in a little bit, has all my super valuable stuff. There's things I'd still be a little concerned about, but my super valuable stuff is in this one ICU. Put it in here and I would carry this on. It's much smaller, it would fit in the seat in front of me, and it's sort of my emergency plan for if I ever was running late or anything like that and I was getting put in a position where I had to check the bag. So I think this is a cool feature from Shimoto and it's why I purposely, although I almost never used this thing, it's why I do always keep it in the bottom of the bag in case I ever reach a situation where I need to pull that out and keep this directly with me. So those are the things I do to try to handle the most anxiety ridden parts of flying with, on a plane with your camera gear. Getting through TSA security, cameras, the batteries, the memory cards, it's all okay to be in the bag. And I've never really had any trouble with getting this camera bag through security and TSA with that in mind. The second thing is making sure I'm there in order to have it go into the overhead bins as opposed to being forced to get gate check. Um, that's always a stressor but get there early. And if for some reason that didn't happen, traffic was bad, TSA lines were longer than you thought or anything like that, like I said, I would try to be nice to the gate operator and try to talk them into letting me take it on anyways. And if everyone was having a bad day and no one was having any of that, I have that spare little bag in there that I could pop the super valuable stuff out, put in that bag and stow it under the seat, even if the rest of the bag had to get checked. And that just helps keep me a little more relaxed going through the airport and it makes sure I have a plan for anything until the plane takes off. Okay, now let's just talk a little bit about how I pack the bag, what's inside, and what I take on a trip. For this particular trip, it's to the Rocky Mountain National Park, and it was just a long weekend, so I did shift how I tend to pack. Some of my longer trips, I'll tend to take more things. I'll take my real video camera, I'll take a second tripod, I'll take the drone. For this trip, I was gonna be predominantly in the National Park, so there's no drone flying anyway, so I did not pack my drone. I also knew I was gonna be hiking around at higher elevations than I'm used to, so I was trying to keep my bag a little lighter than normal, which meant I didn't take my full-size video camera, and I didn't bring my second tripod. I was I was going to rely predominantly on my phone and some GoPros and DJI action cameras to do my video recording with. It kept the load a little smaller. So this is for my Rocky Mountain National Park trip, which like I said, 
slightly different than what I might take on a longer trip. But we'll talk through some of that as we go. So first, let's look at the outside of the bag. I mentioned earlier, try not to draw attention, which means I'm trying to keep nothing protruding above the bag so that things are sticking out. So with that in mind, I do keep a tripod attached to the bag because I want to make sure it gets there and I don't really trust the carbon fiber and check luggage. But I pop the ball head off. And what that does is it keeps it nice and small and keeps it below. I also keep the buckles nice and tight. The Shimoto has a water bottle pocket to put the legs in, has a strap here to keep it from flopping around, the strap here to keep it from flopping around. So it's nice and tight, the bag, and that just helps not draw unwanted attention, either through TSA security. Obviously, they're going to see it on here, but it's just not protruding. It's not grabbing extra attention. And same as I'm boarding the plane. The stewardesses and things like that aren't seeing my bag and think, well, what, what's he doing with this? tall thing here. I also use an FLM tripod, which I did purposely buy for travel. So the legs are, it's the S model, so the legs are not as long, which is also something that helps keep it down below the top of the bag. So those are just some of the things I do. You know, there's some compromises. I don't have the tallest tripod, but it makes a really good travel tripod and it gets me out there. So I do pop the ball head off. I put it in its case. We'll look at it in a minute because I do have the ball head stowed inside the bag, but on the outside, that's it. Other than that, I keep the straps pulled nice and tight. This bag does have a, another pocket over here. I always make sure that it's all tucked in because I'm not carrying a water bottle in it. I don't have tripod legs or anything like that. Again, trying to make sure it's nice and sleek and just doesn't look like a big bag to not catch up unwanted attention. You know, on the straps, I usually pull this off. I don't have it hanging when it goes into the, the airport. I have it in a bag inside. This is my Garmin inReach just uh, uh, that I have. I keep a couple extra carabiners attached to it. Um, sometimes handy going through the airport if you do need to attach something while you're walking or once you get to where you're going, if you're taking the tram somewhere to be able to attach something quickly. I don't keep a lot in the pockets. You know, regarding some of the TSA stuff, I actually typically carry a knife inside one of my pockets, a Leatherman, a multi-tool. I always try to be super certain before I go flying to take that out of the bag. I'll even do it like a week ahead of time when I first think about, oh, I want to be sure I don't accidentally take that. Again, back to the TSA thing, make sure you're not taking anything like a knife that you might normally have in your camera bag with you on the trip. And finally, the other cool thing with this bag is it has multiple carry points, which I've talked about in videos, but it's got a handle at the bottom, handle at the top. And actually this handle right here is pretty handy too. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll try to slide it into the overhead with this handle up, which is why I put the tripod on this handle side, because when you're trying to put the bag up or pull it out, super handy to be able to grab that. But you have multiple grab points. Again, that's one of the reasons I like the Shimoto bag, the extra grab points. Not only are they handy when you're out in the field, they're handy when you're traveling too. So now let's take a look inside the bag. Let's open it up here. Now I do carry my iPad in the bag as well. It's right here, it goes in the sleeve pocket. The past couple times through TSA for this most recent trip, they didn't even ask me to take this out of the bag, so that was super handy. Also one of the reasons I try not to bring a full-size computer because they're less likely to ask for this to come out. But it just slides right in there. Once I'm on the plane, I tend to take it out because I'll watch a movie or something on it. But yeah, we're gonna set this over here. So inside the bag, like I said, for this trip, I didn't bring a drone because I was gonna be in the national park majority of the time and you can't fly a drone in a national park. So there's no real reason to bring it because of the elevation. I did reduce a lot of my video equipment. I didn't bring my video camera, didn't bring my second tripod, and I didn't bring my audio stuff either. So I was able to try to trim this down both for travel and just hiking at elevation, trying to keep the bag light. That said, I have two camera bodies in here. I have the Z7 II right there. It's my main camera when I go out, but I have it tucked in there. And my Z6 II, which is also in there. This is sort of my backup body. Now, depending on where I'm going and length of trip, sometimes I won't take a backup body. And my plan would be if my main one failed, I would rent one when I'm out there. In this particular case, I was out there on the weekend and I didn't feel like I would have a great opportunity to rent a body on the fly and still have time to do what I wanted to do. So I did take my backup body. I mean, actually when I was out there, I actually used it while my first camera was up on the tripod getting pictures. I used the second body on a different lens to get some handheld shots in the area as well. So I've had two camera bodies in there. For this trip, I had the 100-400 in there. This is Sigma 100-400. I wanted to be able to really punch in on some things and be able to zoom in. So I took the 100-400. If I was really concerned about load, I might have taken a 70-300, to but I decided it was worth it to lug this thing around. It is a little on the heavy side. I have it tucked on the side, right over there. My wide angle lens, 14-30, to that was in there. My 24-70 in there and in this pocket i have my gopro stashed i have this dji action cam 
uh, in here as well as my GoPro was in there. It's doing the overhead filming right now though, so it's not, but that was stashed in here. And that's my ICU. So it has all my really valuable stuff. And that's why if I was forced to check this bag, I would get that little pouch out, pull this out, and at least my super expensive stuff would be nice and safe with me on the plane. You know, as far as the lens setup, this worked really well. Got me pretty much from 14 to 400 uh, at a reasonable load. That worked well, it's all in there. The ICU, I don't really do anything extra to protect it. The bag's pretty good. It's got cushioning around. You know, this is a padded pocket and everything's always made it safely. I've flown multiple times with this bag in this gear setup and I've never had a problem with damage to lenses or camera body. So nice and safe and sound in there. Since I don't have my drone with me, I did not put the other ICU in. Uh, people have watched my few other videos have known I sometimes do put an ICU in here with my drone or something like that. But this time I did not. I just wanted the flex space up here. And what I have here is I use tech pouches, and this is where I tend to keep all my batteries and everything like that. For flying, I do put them in these battery safe bags just in case someone wants to be like concerned about the batteries. It is nice to have taped over your terminal ends or have them in safe cases. So some of my batteries travel in travel cases like this. Some of them go in these bags. These will actually fit drone batteries, which I bought them for, but I used them for other camera batteries since I didn't take the drone. And this is the bag that tends to go with me even when I'm out hiking, but I just always know I have all the batteries I need right in here. So I had that in the top flex spot. I had my ball head in here. So once I get to the place I'm going, put the ball head back on the tripod and we're good to go. I just keep it in this case just to mainly not so much protect the ball head because it's pretty robust, but to make sure it's not banging into other things. My filters, I took the Maven filters this time, have my filter case put in up here, nice padded case, keeps the filter safe, have it tucked in this flex spot up here. I always carry a neck strap just in case it's one of the super thin peak design leashes, I think is what it is. I don't use one very often when I'm out doing landscape photography, but it's handy to have just in case so it's small and it fits in there. I have a small rocket blower to use to do any kind of cleaning that I might need. Did actually use it when I was out there, just got a little speck of dirt I've seen on my sensor and I was able to use this to clean it right up. So I do take a rocket blower to keep things nice and clean. Like I said, because I'm a YouTuber, I have many tripods. This was for my phone for the most part. This is for one of the action cams, you know, flexi legs, you can wrap around things. So I did take these extra tripods, even though I didn't bring my full size one, just to help facilitate the video. They don't really do anything with my stills. And then this is my bigger tech bag. And I tend to leave my card readers, miscellaneous cables, even some extra cleaning supplies and everything like that in here. To keep my SSD drive chargers for the action cam batteries. Um, I carry an SSD drive to make backups while on the road. So I have that in there card readers for both the CF Express and the SD cards. That's all in here. Extra cards in case, memory cards in case I need them. And I tend to use this all the time, even when I'm at home. That way when I'm packing or anything like that, I know all I have to do is grab this bag and I'll have everything I need and I won't forget anything. So during travel, it fits in here. Once I get to where I'm going, this tends to stay in the hotel room and I don't really bring it out in the field with me. It weighs a bit, It's but I gotta get that gear out there. So it fits in here up in this flex spot. Really recommend travel pouches. I mentioned them in one of my gift guides. Really helps me keeping gear organized, simple, and when you're trying to grab your gear and go, knowing you've got what you need. And I get some extra pockets in here. I do keep some multi-tools. None of these are bladed and none of them are long, so they wouldn't get stopped by TSA. You got like an Allen key to fix a tripod problem and a little baby screwdriver on the edge of the multi-tool here. We'll pop it out and show you what I've got. Little cleaning cloth, little Allen key. This little multi-tool, uh, I've shown this on previous videos before too, but it's got Allen keys and it's got a little slot screwdriver piece there that you can use, got a bottle opener. So handy to have, keep a spare tripod plate just in case I need one for some reason or forget something and then just another little Allen key. So I keep all this in this pouch and I zip it into the top of the bag here like that. Beyond that, the other pockets, <laughs> This one's handy for little documents if you need something real easy. Currently it has a compass and a map in there for the area I was going to. The accessory straps, I try not to hang anything from these when I'm traveling because again, I'm trying to keep a low profile and not get people looking at my bag, asking questions like, should he really be bringing that on the plane or should they be checking it? But they're super handy when you're out in the field to be able to catch extra things. For this Rocky Mountain trip, I rented a set of snowshoes in case I needed them and these accessory straps made it super easy to get the snowshoes on the bag so that I could carry them on my hike in case I got into deeper snow or I needed them. And then pockets up at the top or anything you might need quickly. Like I said, it goes in the overhead, so I tend not to get this bag, but if while you leave the car, get into the airport, sometimes it's handy to toss something in there if you want. 
So that's it. That's how I packed my bag for one of these trips. It worked out super well for this Rocky Mountain trip. I've packed very similarly for my trips out to the Southwest. I have an upcoming Death Valley trip. I will pack my bag very similar and it just works for me. It hasn't caused me any headaches at TSA and by trying to get there early, it's always been able to be put in overhead bins and just helps lower the whole level of stress around flying. So those are just some of my tips. I'm sure there's landscape photographers that travel way more than I do. So I'd love to hear your tips. What do you do to make it a little easier to get through the airport? Make sure that you get your bag checked. If you have a favorite tip, be sure to drop them in the comments below. I'd love to learn from you and see what else I could be doing to improve my setup on how I travel through the airports. So if you like today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching.